Hey guys, Trent here coming at you with another video. Today I'm going to show you how I refurbish original Nintendo Entertainment Systems. So let's check it out. So the first thing when you get a NES and you want to refurbish it, get it ready to resell or to use, uh, you want to first the first thing test it before you do anything to see how it is so i've got it plugged up i got it hooked up to the tv um we should see uh that blank just like that that's the lockout chip working since there's no game in the system it's not able to make a connection so it won't boot up anything so that's how the region lockout works so i got two cartridges here i'm going to try uh one is a clean copy of Contra. I cleaned it and then my a clean copy of Tetris that I'm going to use throughout the duration of uh, the refurbishment process to test the system. So we'll try that one first. Whoa! And amazingly it started up right away. I didn't expect that. Uh, most of the time you're not going to get that. Let's try uh, Contra. Okay, that's more like what I expected. So because of the lockout chip, it didn't make a good good contact. All right. I'm surprised that Tetris fired up right away. So yeah, again, not getting it, not getting what I need. But mainly the reason why we do that is because now we know the Nintendo is functioning the way it needs to function. It's just that the pin connector is dirty or bent out of shape or basically bent in a worn out position because of it being so old. So flipping the nest upside down, uh, you'll need a Phillips head screwdriver, a pretty good size one. You've got, first off, you've got your uh, little cover right here that was intended for an expansion. Uh, this makes a good screw holder. So you've got six screws you got to remove on the bottom one two three four five six so we'll remove those so once you've got all the screws removed you can then lift your the system off of the off of the top cover so now keep in mind all the six screws are still in there uh, I just find this place where I can let them all kind of fall out So there we go, I got my six screws in my temporary screw holder. Okay, after the next step I like to do is to clean the top cover. Uh, you can just wash it. I just like to wash it in the, in the sink with dish soap because it's perfectly fine, it's not gonna hurt it. But one thing you gotta be careful is the edges and corners of this cover are very easily chipped. So you gotta be careful when you're banging, not to bang it around too much in the sink. And so to clean it, what I use is a sponge and then a toothbrush to get down into these cracks and crevices here and some dish soap. You're gonna scrub it down, be kind of gentle with this right here. Dish soap won't really take this off, but still don't scrub too hard. Uh, there are some cleaners, especially isopropyl alcohol, will rub, will take this uh, logo right off. So you gotta be just be mindful when you're in this working in this area. All right, got it uh, nice and cleaned off with dish soap. Uh, now I'm gonna just gently uh, dry it with a towel and then let it sit off to the side to dry for good. And so it'll be getting nice and dry the whole time we're working on the Nintendo. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is take off this uh, RF shield. There's a total of seven screws. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll remove all those. Okay, got all the screws out. So now the dust, uh, or now the RF shield will just come straight off. So now that exposes our, our tray and our 72 pin connector, which is the part that is having the contact issue. So the next step will be to take out all the screws to remove uh, the tray and the final uh, two screws to remove um, to be able to lift up the uh, the motherboard and everything so for this part we're going to move one two three four five six seven 
eight screws. Now notice on the back part of the tray on each side, this side and this side, there is actually two different color screws. So the, this one here in the back is the same as all the other screws in the system. But this one that's a different color is a little bit longer. So those screws actually got to go back in that location. But those are the only two screws that are any different than all the other ones that you're taking out. Okay, so now we got all the screws extracted. And so I got all the regular ones and then just those two silver ones that are a little bit longer that are going to go in that specific spot on the tray. So now we remove the tray where I've removed every single screw so we're able to lift up the whole entire board. But anyways, now we should just be able to pull this uh, tray assembly out. There we go. And so all this stuff here you can just clean with isopropyl. So now we're able to lift the, the motherboard from its uh, bottom RF shield. So now for to get this 72 pin connector off, really I think the best way is just to take one, kind of like pop one side off like that. And then the other side will come off. So now we have our 72 pin connector removed. And you see how it is, the, the long part is the top part that actually connects with the game and then this short part on the bottom is the one that connects with the, uh, the motherboard, the circuit board. Now some people like to bend the pins back up a little bit using a small tool and whenever I do it I use just a my very very small flathead screwdriver um, my recommendation on this is if you're gonna do it do it ever so slightly and I mean ever so slightly because these pins are made to just basically make barely make perfect contact is the way they were designed that's why you, whenever you insert the game into the nintendo you push it down so what it's doing is it's when you push it down it's seating the bottom part of the pins on these pins but also there's some pins in the back here that you can't get to the top pins that whenever the game whenever the game seats down the top ones make contact with the ones on the top too so if you bend the pins too much you can mess up the configuration uh the alignment of how the pins seat so again if you're going to bend the pins you know what you do is you get underneath a pin and what i do is i twist and just bent it up bend it up ever so slightly but again like i said ever so slightly and what I'm going to rely on doing is boiling the pins. Uh, I like that because what you're doing is really we're just going to try to get the pins to kind of go back to their natural resting place that they were before. So then for the motherboard here, I take isopropyl in a rag and try to clean everything as best as I can here. Uh, and then also I will lift this whole thing up and I'll take like my shop back and try to vacuum this stuff out. For my basic refurbishment, I don't recommend removing the controller, the power ports and the controller ports and all that. It's generally speaking not necessary. But by having this loose now, we can clean all this stuff right here with some, some isopropyl alcohol and everything. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is disable the, the region lockout chip, okay? Uh, this is going to allow, by disabling the lockout chip, we're going to make it to where that blinking screen thing doesn't ever happen anymore. It'll be a steady power light, whether the game's making perfect contact or not. So that'll eliminate a, a lot of the startup issues. Of course, we still gotta put clean games in there and everything, but uh, this is gonna help out a lot. If you wanna keep your system the way it was originally, you don't have to do this, but again, I, I recommend it. I do it to all of them and it, they always work fine. And in fact, they work easier and better. So, this is the front of the system. Again, now we can lift this stuff up. What I like to do is kind of lift this and get this in a position where you can kind of put it in an L shape like this. Because uh, you don't want to just like completely disassemble it because it makes it, it's kind of a tough puzzle to get to figure out if you take it all the way apart. So, but I'll rotate it this way so we can see. And so you see there's these two capacitors here. Uh, that's a pretty good roadmap of helping you find the lockout chip, which is right here to the right of it. 
So now I'll rotate it in a way that we can look at it easier again. Put it on its side like this. So there's my two capacitors. There's the chip. And then there's a circle right here in the chip. That's the A1 designator. So we know that this is the 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 one the pin number one basically right here. Let me get a little closer with that. So again, there's the two capacitors. Uh, there's the the chip, and you can see probably that little circle. So we want to clip, or in this case, I'm going to just pry the fourth pin. So count from left to right, starting with the very first one on the edge. One, two, three, four. So once again, that fourth one in, one, two, three, four, this one right here. Uh, you don't have to do it this way. Uh, you can clip it with a tool if you have, but I found that you can just simply pry it loose. It'll basically rip right out of the top part. And, and now it is separate. Not make, no longer making contact with the chip. And I've done that many, many times and I found it never to hurt anything. Just kind of bend it in a way where you can see it's free and clear of everything. I've never damaged a chip as far as I know by doing that. So now the, the lockout chip is disabled. Leg number four is cut. Separated from the, from the, uh, the chip. So we're done with that part. All right, next step, we're gonna boil the pins. So uh, don't worry about it boiling for as long as you want. They, nothing bad will happen. They can't melt or anything like that. So we're just gonna let it boil for, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes, and then we'll take it out occasionally, get you some tongs, carefully take them out. Don't burn yourself, get, uh, put them in a rag. And what I like to do is get my toothbrush and take some of the water and, and give them a little bit of a, a scrub, put them back in for another 10 minutes, boil it some more, and just repeat that process several times. All right, it's been a while, so I'm gonna take it out, being careful, put it on a rag to where I can handle it. So now I'm holding it with a rag to where I won't burn myself, and I just dip my toothbrush in some of that hot water, and I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a scrub here. getting those pins then the other thing people like to do is to take the take your test game and insert it in and out a bunch of times and kind of manipulate it try to get those pins to sit where they were supposed to do this 10 15 20 times wiggle it a little bit and then throw it in and let it boil some more, another 10, 20 minutes. Yeah, really just keep boiling until you're satisfied. It's not gonna hurt it. Uh, you just wanna get that deep, that deep cleansing basically with the heat and the, uh, the boiling water uh, to hopefully realign those pins to where they need to be and get any kind of grime off of there. Okay, once you're, uh, before we put the 72 pin back, we're gonna wanna clean this connection on the motherboard. I just clean it with isopropyl alcohol. Some people like to clean it with Brasso. I don't think that's really necessary, but it doesn't hurt. Just give it a, a bit of a contact wipe down. Okay, now we're ready to put the 72 back. It's pretty simple. Uh, you don't have to like force it with too much force. There we go, popped it back on. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna reinstall the tray to the point where we can test the game, uh, game out and make sure that we're working well before we reassemble everything else back. So this is the part where people can screw it up because because again, right here, see this this lip right here has to go, it has to go underneath this board right here. And if it doesn't do that, uh, it the tray doesn't sit right. And this is where people mess it up a lot of times. So. Uh, when I slide it on, I gotta make sure it's underneath that lip of that board, and it is. You see there how it's underneath the board? Then you just gotta make sure there's a, a port 
underneath here that you just got to make sure it goes right into the right spot on the uh, onto that uh, RF shield. So now that I got it all, see that port had to go go through in there. So once you got all that in like that, once you got all of that in there like that, all these uh, little pins right here should poke back up and everything should sit flat and sturdy. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put in the screws around the tray. One, uh, the four, four regular screws and then the two silver ones that go in the, the special spot. So the silver long one goes there again, like I said, and then the regular one here. And then that's gonna be the same on the other side and then a regular screw here and then the same on the other side. Okay, now with all the screws back in place on the, the tray, one thing you can do if you got that, the tray underneath the lip like you should, the, this tray function should function like it, it's supposed to. The tray catch looks like it's working good. So now we'll test it out. Okay, first thing, if the disabled lockout chip works like we anticipate, this light should stay steady and we won't have a blinking screen. We'll test that with no game right now. So yeah, there you see steady blinking, no blinking light, steady light. That means the lockout chip is disabled properly. And you see we have no blinking screen. All right, so the moment of truth, let's try that Contra that didn't work fire up the, the last time. And first try. Steady light. Steady screen, perfectly working game, perfectly working system with a disabled lockout chip that we don't have to worry about. Oh yeah, keep in mind also, uh, to get the games to work like that, the games need to be clean too. So I'm gonna show you how to clean games as well. Okay, to clean a game, I use a few things. I use Brasso on the, on the contacts. Uh, so that's what I use. You don't have to, but that's what I like to use. And then uh, I, clean it off once I've polished it with the Brasso with isopropyl alcohol. So to open an original NES game, uh, most, some of the old first runs of uh, original NES games from the first few years of Nintendo will just be able to be opened with a regular flathead screwdriver, but that's not the majority of Nintendo games. The majority of the Nintendo games have a security uh, bolt in there that requires a certain uh, driver. It requires a 3.8 millimeter security bit. And that's what this is. So on eBay, you can get for about five to $7, you can get a set 3.8 millimeter and a, a 4.3 millimeter, I believe it is. 3.8 is for opening the Nintendo games. So the 4.3 is for, I think uh, it's for opening a Super Nintendo console. And I think Sega Genesis games. Uh, so, you know, it's so, ch they're so cheap to get both of them, just get both of them. Uh, but this is the one you're going to be using for Nintendo is the, the 3.8 opens all Nintendo games, unless they use a regular flathead screwdriver for some of the five screws and other old games. So we remove all, all three screws. Cause this is a three screw. Most of them that use the security bits, pretty much all of them that use the security bits are going to be three screws only. All right, usually when I'm in here, I wipe everything down of this with alcohol carefully, not to damage the label. But when you got it open, it's a good time to actually really thoroughly clean the game inside and out. On the exterior of the game, the only thing I use is isopropyl alcohol. But the most important thing we gotta do is clean the contacts of the board. This game, Final Fantasy, happens to be looking pretty immaculate already. Like this game was hardly played at all. So I'm really happy to have this copy of Final Fantasy. But we will still clean it. So what I do is I just apply a very small little amount of Brasso like that. And I just give it a gentle polish. And usually that amount that I applied is good enough to hit the other side too. But you can apply some extra to the other side if you want to. Don't try not to polish too violent and vigorously because 
you don't want to create some kind of like static. <laughs> but just giving it one like that shouldn't be too bad. And you can see the grime where I, I rubbed that. So we made some progress. Uh, games that, look, that didn't look so new like this one are going to show a lot more residual grime that you take off. Then I get me some isopropyl and I I go ahead and clean the, that because you don't want any residual uh, brasso on there that'll still be eating away at the, uh, the contacts. So there you go. That's how you clean a connector of a game. And uh, as far as reinstalling it, it can only go one way. It will not let you put it in the wrong way. So yeah, it won't fit. So we put that back. We got our three tabs that slide into the tabs on the top. And then we put back our three screws. So once your system's rocking, ready to go like that, all you gotta do now, last step is put your RF shield back, make sure the pins are sticking through, put your, put your seven screws back into it, and then finally put on your cover. That's nice and clean and dry now. And you're gonna put your six, six screws back in there and that should be all your screws. And that is how you completely disassemble, refurbish and reassemble a original NES console. All right, so I hope that video helps you out if you're trying to get a, a NES uh, refurbished so you can use it for yourself or for resale. Uh, takes a little time, but you can uh, get a little bit more bang for your buck when it comes to these Nintendos. I hope you enjoyed. Please like, comment, and subscribe and have a good one.